has work to do. It got the job a hundred years ago, and will have it tomorrow, carrying the load. The train has a single statement to make. Coming through. Indiana night into an Ohio morning, carrying the load. Collinwood, Ohio, crew chain. Trainmen have done since the first wood burner ran. The old and new crews exchange greetings, news of families, good weather and clear track. Some things do not change. as it came when the steam engine ran on this track, comes across Ohio. Over the old right-of-way moves the new train, moving through the old unchanging forms of corn and grapes and wheat growing. The right-of-way ahead made safe and smooth. John Henry with new muscles. There's not a man alive can pull and drive spikes like this. Or raise up rails. Or pack the ballast. Or pull out old ties and put in new ones like that. Move down the road bed, so it's set for that train to roll through. The early bird, moving at 60 miles an hour, shows up on a master control board. On this panel, all train movement on the next 200 miles of road is registered. Remote controls here make two tracks do the work of four handle 85 trains a day, which meet and pass in automatic safety. Here we see the early bird following a local freight. Early bird moving east on track one. Ahead of it and moving east on the same track, the local freight. As the early bird catches up, the dispatcher switches the local freight to track two. freight moves over. The 
dispatcher lines up track one. And the early bird sweeps on. Throughout its length, the electronic nervous system of the railroad pulsing. Let me have the freight service bureau, please. Service bureau. This is Sutton of Brinkman's. Can you tell me when I can expect a New York Central 64247? Out of Chicago on the 23rd. Okay, I got it. Hold on a moment, please. Your car left the Frontier Yard at 1.15 p.m. this afternoon. It's due in New York tomorrow morning at 4 a.m. Very well, thank you. Goodbye. Coming through. Destination New York. Every day it is taken for granted. The morning will arrive on time, delivering sunrise, food, fuel, mail, and the standard of living. And more of the same tomorrow. Every day it is taken for granted that what is needed will be on hand. It is taken for granted that the train will do its job. The country and the cities grow. The train will help deliver the future, as it has done from the beginning. But that is only half the story. I'd like to tell you the other half myself. But first a question. How would you like to run a business if the government used your tax dollars to build one alongside you, then made it tax-free and turned it over to a competitor and helped him operate and maintain it? That is the problem of the railroad. Now let me go back a little in railroad history. In the 19th century, the railroads had a virtual monopoly of inland transportation. Regulation of the railroads grew up with that monopoly in mind. They were necessary laws. Indeed, they made sense. Half a century ago, today these laws still control railroad operations. But what happened to our monopoly? Is it in the passenger transportation? Is it in hauling freight? Well, what happened to our monopoly? As all of us know, it has disappeared. But you never know it from the volumes of laws and regulations that still govern our railroad operation. Here is an airport, a modern, up-to-date airport. Who paid for it? Why, like every airport, the taxpayers did. The local government took tax money to build it or it floated tax-exempt bonds to build it. And it got the federal government to put up more tax money from all of us to help in its construction. Now here is a rail terminal, not quite as up-to-date. Who paid for that? Why, the railroad did. And it not only paid for it, but pays taxes on top of it. Three million dollars a year, to be exact. Now that makes a difference. Airports, bus terminals, truck terminals, bridges, tunnels, ultra-modern freeways, government-dredged waterways, the rights of way of our competitors, billions of dollars worth of property, built and maintained by taxes, yours and ours. The right-of-way of the New York Central, 10,000 miles of it, our bridges, our freight terminals, our passenger terminals, our research installations, not only built by us, not only maintained by us, but in addition, we pay property taxes of $40 million annually. 
taxes that go to support community activities like schools, the fire department, the police department, the highway department. Quite a contrast to our competition, isn't it? And yet the railroads are the lowest true cost producers of mass transportation. The ships in the St. Lawrence Seaway, the trucks on the highway, are not truly producing transportation as inexpensively as the train, when you realize how many of their costs are paid for by the taxpayer. Which brings us back to our question. How would you like to run a business if the government built one alongside you and made it tax-free and then turned it over to a competitor and helped him operate and maintain it? That is the problem of the railroads. Now, despite outdated policies which restrict us, discriminate against us, and would have put any other industry out of business, the railroads have made progress. And you've just seen how much we are doing to make even more progress. But in a competitive free enterprise society, we cannot indefinitely run a business in competition with government-financed, government-supported business. What we have is a lopsided transportation policy on federal and state levels, a policy which is slowly squeezing the life out of our railroads. What do we ask? Well, that's simple. We ask for an up-to-date fair transportation policy. We ask that all forms of transportation pay their way, as now only the railroads do. Or failing that, we ask the same tax benefits and the same government support under which other forms of transportation operate today. We are not just discussing a 4% return versus a 6% or 8% return. We're discussing the steady expansion and growth of American industry as a whole. We're discussing your standard of living and comfort. We're discussing your better standard of living and your greater comfort tomorrow. You can't have them without modern and more efficient railroads unless you know the facts and demand a modern transportation policy which gives equal treatment to every form of transportation. Thank you.